Ooh, yes. This is tr tribute to uh, Carolee Schneeman. So um, she's an artist who did a lot with the body. Um, she famously um, pulled a scroll out of her vagina <laughs> live in person. So this is all of, you can see there's pencil. Welcome to the Inquisitive Room Podcast. I'm Shaw, your host. This is a podcast that brings interviews and insights from all walks of life from a bird's eye view on the reality of being. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Inquisitive Run Podcast. It's Shaw here, your host. And I want to thank you for returning, if you are returning. And the analytics tell us that we have many people returning to the show. So thank you. Uh, whatever we're doing, hopefully we continue to do it correctly. And if you're new here, thank you so much. And we do hope that you subscribe to the channel. You leave a comment. Let us know what you thought was helpful. And just continue to follow us, continue to listen. It, it's just always appreciated. So today, I welcome to the show Sally Jane Brown, who's an artist. And Sally is fascinating because we talk about how art is inspired, but also how to pursue a career in art. And she delves into her journey of art. And you know, you, you may think some topics, you think, okay, just go and see the painting, see this, see the sculptures, look at the art books. But there's a process behind it all. And Sally really does talk about how that's possible. How do you actually become an artist? She's also a curator and she's a writer currently based in Morgantown. Her artwork, including drawing and painting and also performance art, explores motherhood, womanhood, and the body. So that makes it fascinating. And, you know, in therapy, we deal with a lot of people who have a lot of shame around their body, around body parts in particular, very specific body parts. They're very shameful of, there is lots of fear around the body. So I like that Sally focuses on different body parts, in particular, the torso. And we're going to talk about that and what that means for her. She has exhibited her art in uh, spaces nationally and in the UK. She's won two awards for illustration for Intimates and Fools and Leaves of Absence. These are two um, uh, two of her art pieces, both with poetry by Laura Madeline Wiseman. So it was accompanied, those two pieces were accompanied by poetry by Laura Madeline Wiseman. She's participated in artist residencies in Tennessee and Pennsylvania and in Buenos Aires. And her writing has been published in Woman's Art Journal and Art Slant, among others. She's curated group shows in Nashville, Pittsburgh, and Omaha, and she's been awarded several grants for her artistic and scholarly work. So this is really important. How do you get your art out there? And it's all about funding, and she's done a lot of it through grants, but she's going to tell us about that. She's also uh, presented a multiple national arts conference. She holds a Bachelor of Arts, a Master's of Public Administration and a Master of Arts, Art History and Feminist Theory. She's a former member of the College Art Association National Committee of Women in the Arts, which is really important, and edited the online journal Les, F Les Femmes Follets, and currently serves as exhibits coordinator for the West Virginia University Libraries and art editor of Thimble Literary Magazine. She is an advocate for the National Museum for Women in the Arts. Sally's fascinating. She's a very calm person. I like calm people. I do like people who exhibit a lot of energy, as long as it's as long as it's exciting energy and not aggressive, nasty energy. I like really nice energy. Everybody who knows me knows that. I will usually leave a room if somebody is too oh, well, unless it's in therapy or a group session or something. Um, it, it, because all their stuff comes out. And people's stuff tend to come out around 
around therapists. That happens. <laughs> I don't know why. It happens with psychics as well. Uh, people will lie to psychics. And I, I, you know, we've often talked about this, myself, my colleagues, uh, other psychics, I mean, my friends. Why do, you know, psychics, we get together, we'll say, why do people even lie to us? Why do they lie to us? We see right through them, but they're lying. And we've come to the, well, I suggested this conclusion that people want you to know that they're lying for some reason, because they're so, they can't help but expose themselves to you that they want to show you, look, this is what I do. They'll show you the good and the bad. That's my conclusion. But we've got lots of artistic insights into Sally's work and into art. In particular, there is a funny moment in this in this interview. You have to watch it. There's a very funny moment in it. As James was editing, oh yes, I do want to mention this because people do ask me, to, should I contact James? Should I contact you? You should contact James to be on the show. That, but there's one email address and we share it. But James, so I've got three people around, three people who help me. James does a lot of the editing. He also is a guest liaison, so he gets a lot of people in for the show for me. I will approach people myself, um, but James knows how to do this, and he also has more time. <laughs> so, um, and also Julianne. Julianne works, uh, Julianne is a family, she's family, and she has always dealt with my appointments um, for my practice. And she's also always dealt with any admin and things like that. She's brilliant. And again, you know, she's very privileged. She doesn't have to work. So she's uh, she has time to help me, which is lovely. I'm very blessed. And then, of course, Lisa, Lisa Talbot Marks. People, a lot of people met Lisa at some of my shows when I was exhibiting at... Um, Kensington and different places. Uh, what's the other one now? Where where have they moved? Mind, Body, Soul has moved to not Crystal Palace. What's the other one? Anyway, they've moved. Um, but Ju Julianne would always come there. James went one year, but Julianne always comes, and Lisa always comes to those. So a lot of people have met Lisa. When I say Lisa, you you guys have met Lisa Talbot Marks. So she's lovely. She's a very long friend. She, we've known each other for thirty some years. Our families are close. We, you know, we don't live around each other, unfortunately, but we do see each other very often. I go to her. She comes to me. Um, I will have her kid. You know, I mean, the families will, you know, connect a lot. So very close knit team working with me. Uh, you know, but Jay, a lot of people say, oh, James is lovely. James is, James is lovely unless you bite him and he will bite back. James is fantastic, but he's very much like me. He's very calm, very relaxed. Uh, he knows what he's doing. He knows what to do. Uh, he, he will get it done in a very short period of time. James is fantastic. Well, they're, they're all fantastic, um, but, you know, and also people ask me about my family. Look, my family do not want to be on camera. They don't want me talking about them. I respect it. I personally don't want them out either. I don't, they, it's unnecessary. You don't have to know every aspect of what happens for me or, or my life. And people are, have a right to their privacy. And so, uh, you know, people don't want to be on on youtube or anywhere else and that's there some people i know are in jobs where they just don't want to be on youtube and art interpretive we talk about that as well we talk about how art is uh subjective you interpret art the way you want to and i love going to view art i do love performance art as well by the way, there is a funny moment in this interview. I'm not going to say any more. Just watch the whole thing. There is a very, a very funny. That's how I got on James. That's right. As James was um, editing the video, he said, can we keep this in? Uh, please let me keep this in. I was like, yeah, OK, keep it in. But um, it is hilarious. Well, I found it. We both fell out laughing. I forgot it had happened because... You know, you do the interviews and then they just get edited. But I remember, you know, of course, 
sometimes I forget things because I can't keep everything in my memory like I used to. Well, I'm there, but anyway, I digress. Sally Jane Brown is on the show. She's a lovely, wonderful artist with some excellent work. Go to her website. Links will be in there. And by the way, uh, follow, subscribe to the channel, come back, you know, turn on your notifications so you don't miss an episode. Go to Spotify, Apple, wherever you listen. I know people listen everywhere. We're not uh, iHeart, I think. I got an email asking why we weren't on iHeart. iHeart doesn't do UK uh, shows. It's only for the US. Um, and our an analytics show that UK is number one. U.S. number two and Australia number three for those watching my show. India is, I think India is next. Uh, we've got high views in Spain, Italy, and lots of other places. Lot, lots and lots of other countries. Italy and Spain tend to be quite big. Greece, recently, there's lots of people listening from Greece. Thank you very much. Um Yes. Yeah, so thank you, everybody. Thanks to all the new subscribers. Stay tuned because I've got some other bits coming in, I think, that are quite interesting. Uh, for me, this is a, a bit of a vanity <laughs> podcast because I, I, I approach topics that I'm interested in, people that I'm interested in. It's the only way I can do the show. Um, and... Yeah, so I know it goes against a lot, but hey, people are some people are watching, and of course we'll change things up. But I'm not for sensationalism or anything like that. Although I did want to do a commentary on Wimbledon this year, but I chose not to. I wasn't inspired enough, I'm afraid. Um, congratulations to Carlos Alcaraz, but I, 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 yeah. It's all change, people. It's all change. It's all change. And that happened when the when the old guard changes. It happened when, when Mackerel retired. It happened, uh, you know, when Agassi went out. It happened when Becker, well, oh, no, not Becker. It happened. <laughs> it happens. It happens. It happens. It happens. And now there's a transition again. It's just not the same for me without Federer. Uh, without Nadal, uh, Murray, without Mar you know, it's just, um, and yeah, it's all changed. People know I'm a huge tennis fan and I do love to watch the championships. I go every year. I digress. Um, some people are saying they don't hear enough about me on the podcast. I'm trying to give you more, uh, but there's limits. <laughs> this is not about me not all about me, this is about my guests. And people say they like me rambling. Well, well, why don't you put it in the comments instead of sending me emails? Why put it in the comments? You know, I, I'm encouraging you all to just put the comments in the comments. It's nice to hear from you, but it, it would be even better if it were in a review or in or in the YouTube comments. Um, our main, our main, main, main source though is streaming. It's Spotify and Apple. I hope wherever you are in the world, I hope you're having a good day, and I hope you enjoy the interview. Here it is with Sally Jane Brown. So, Sally, it's great to see you. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Okay, so you're an artist, and one of the things I like to ask all artists is, how were you drawn, no pun intended, but how how were you really drawn towards art, and what it kind of occurred for you to make that decision that this is what I'm going to be doing? Um. So... Back in high school, I always liked being creative, uh, whether it was acting or writing or um, fashion design. So I thought I went into college as a fashion design major. And um, so we were required to take a figure drawing class. And I just fell in love with just uh, charcoal to paper and like the expression of it. And I really fell out of love with sewing and um, the fashion world. And so um, yeah, just from that moment on, I knew I just wanted to, to draw and my drawing professor was really cool because before 
college, I kind of felt like everything had to look a certain way. Like every art had to look a certain way. It had to be quote realistic um, or it had to be quote good. But in college, it was more about um, expression for me than, um, than quote being good. So that really kind of broke me out of my shell and made me fell in love with the raw form of art. Yes. And can you tell us about when you speak about raw form of art, for you, what is that? I know everybody ha- uses different media. And so for you, what form of art is that? Yeah. So I like, like I said, the traditional like pencil to paper, charcoal to paper. And when I paint, I do it more abstractly. I actually use my body as a brush. So I'll paint on my body and uh, stamp it on paper. So it's really very raw and organic in um in each of the the media that I use. Sometimes I collage a little bit and that's pretty um organic as well. But I I kind of my approach is kind of the anti anti pristine um traditional huge looming um artwork and it's more of a raw intimate process and result to me. Never miss a show by clicking the subscribe button right now. Thank you for your support. You make this podcast possible. Now, back to the show. Excellent. And is that why people say art is subjective? Because I suppose when you look at art, I don't know what people are drawn to first. Is it the medium that was or media that was used? It would be watercolor, pencil, charcoal, whatever it is, or is it the actual image itself? I mean, what what has been your experience when people view your art? That's a good question. I think mine is really conceptual, so it's I I would say generally it's less so like the the media and more so the image and the content. Um, because of the ideas that I'm exploring. Um, That said, most of it, most of my work, you might want some context, you don't need context, but I think because the idea is so important to me that I like to have people know my intent and, and, and glean from that. And sometimes if they just think it's like a fun drawing or abstract body print, then that's cool too. But I, my intent is a large part of my work so so that's important to me as well and I know culturally which we're going to talk about in a minute um because you're very aware of different societal issues and I know you focus on things and some things in particular but I wonder isn't it fascinating I want to get your thoughts on this that art can inspire such amazing conversations when we look back at avant-garde artists like Basquiat and maybe Andy Warhol and Keith Haring, people who in the 80s were, people would just stand around and it was an event and they would, you know, just talk about it and it became moving art in many ways. People turned it into wearing t-shirts and all. So it inspires people, I think, to talk, to think, to ponder, to wonder. And for you, how does your art contribute to that, to, to conversations about society and human beings and what we're doing here? Yes, for sure. That is like kind of the impetus of most of my work is that people have a conversation. So so part of my intent around my work is just as a woman artist practicing and sharing my perspective because more, we need more women to share their perspective creatively because we're, you know, half of the population or a lot of the population, as well as uh, underrepresented artists, non-binary artists. We need more more of us telling our stories. So that's like a very basic part of it. But then in addition to that, I do a lot of, like I said, body prints. So I'm looking at body image and the gaze. And I want people to think about that when they're looking at um, the old masters or even magazines or social media, like how the body is represented. And I really want to challenge traditional representations of the body. That's why I abstract it with my body prints. And then a lot of my work is in tribute to other 
women or feminist artists around me or from art history because uh, women artists, especially uh, women artists of color have been left out of textbooks and museums and galleries. Um, and we, we are still very underrepresented and often misrepresented. And so um, a lot of my work is in tribute to an individual uh, woman artist. So I, I want people to to learn about them as they go and as they look at my work and talk about them and ask them. I love when people ask me questions about them. And so, yeah, I kind of have multi missions and some of my work is about motherhood as a mother artist. There's, that's a whole nother uh, discussion challenge and, and everything. So I, I, yeah, multiple intents with a lot of my series and some of it is just playful, but a lot of it is pretty intentional um, geared towards um, people learning and acknowledging and recognizing and respecting women artists and women's perspectives. Yes, and that is such a niche as well for you because, well, for art, because you focus on womanhood, motherhood, as you've said, and as you've described, the body. And in particular, one particular part of the body, which is some, mostly overlooked, I think, uh, the torso. Uh, which is really our core, isn't it? It's what keeps us where we are. It forms everything. But can you tell us a little bit about how you were drawn to explore those areas and why the torso? Yeah, that's a really good question. I hadn't really conceptualized it intentionally or directly in that way, but I definitely focus on the torso. Like you said, I think it's like, the foundational part of our body. Um, if we don't have it, we really don't have anything. So yeah, um, and I just think it's what, you know, if we go back to essentialism like Jewish Chicago, then it's supposedly what defines us, but it's also not. So that's why I like to enjoy abstracting it and make people see it in a different way. Maybe they don't, you know, know what they're looking at, but it's a beautiful form and, um, and also, it's so often depicted in an idealized way. And so I want to, you know, challenge that not because I don't have an idealized body, which I don't, but that's my point is that I want to more abstract it and see it differently rather than just an object for someone's gaze. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Because even as you were speaking there, I was thinking about the attention the abs get. And then when you have motherhood, when someone's carrying a baby, that draws attention. And so there's lots of different aspects in that. And people often talk about flattening the stomach. There's so much focus on the torso, the stomach area in particular, the oh. solar plexus, that area that carries that energy of, you know, I believe the solar plexus carries our anger, our frustration and all of that. That's why we have so many gut issues in life. Um, but so so for me, when I look at at your focus on the torso, it's so much more than the torso. Um, it's so yeah. much more and it goes into all areas. And I can imagine. So tell us about because I, I could I just have this image of people coming to see your art, but them gathering around a lot of your art about the torso. But so where do you display? How can people come and see you? Oh, good question. Well, I actually have a couple um, public artworks here where I live, um, just south of Pittsburgh and West Virginia, which is really fun. So uh, there's four large public trash cans that have eight of my body prints um, adorned Wow! on them in vinyl, not actual body prints. But yeah, it's they're right downtown. I love seeing them. So that's really fun. Um, so my website is my name, sallyjanebrown.com, and I have two exhibitions coming up this fall. I'm really excited about one in Pittsburgh at the Manos Gallery, and then I have one here locally, so I'm really excited about it. I'm also on Instagram at salary underscore art, S-A-L-L-E-R-Y underscore A-R-T. So yeah, thank you for asking. Oh, brilliant. Well, all those links will be in the show notes, but a couple of more questions, please. Yeah. Um, how have you navigated exhibitions or exhibiting nationally and also internationally? So how, you know, how does an artist do that? 
Good question. I mean, a lot of it is submissions, but a lot of it is kind of just making it happen on your own. If, you know, you're sort of an emerging artist or if you're in a smaller town like me, um, I'm actually from the Midwest, mostly from Omaha. So oh. um, I, I exhibited there in undergrad and then I actually quit making art after I graduated. And then I came back to it after I had um, my first baby. And I just started, um, I got to know people in the arts by modeling for an art class. So kind of the other end of <laughs> where I came from. And then once I got the confidence and started drawing and painting again, I just, with my fellow um, artists in the in the area, we just started curating our own shows, just asking galleries and asking venues, hey, can we have this show? And we just did it ourselves. So that's a lot of it. And then a lot of it is submitting and talking to galleries and seeing, you know, the open calls and, and everything like that. Yes, but you also won awards for your oh, illustrations. Yeah. So, I mean, how does that happen? Um, yeah, submitting. I have illustrated three books now, I think. And yes, two of them, thank you, won illustration awards. And um, they were just submit. Um, to the Nebraska Center for the Book, and we won them. And then I've won a couple of grant awards. Again, it's just a process of submitting with all of your credentials, and then hopefully you get it. A lot of times I don't, but I'm fortunate that sometimes I have. <laughs> yes. I mean, that because how does an artist fund their passion, what they were born to do? how how do you fund it how do you live? exactly yeah I mean I work full-time and so I write a lot of grants and a lot of it is self-funded and I have some I have one really really um good patron who's very generous and she helps me a lot um with with materials and supplies and stuff like that so yeah it's just a lot of grit and working hard and being resourceful and looking out for grants and opportunities and working on promotion, which is really hard and time consuming, but it is important. Yes. And you've collaborated as well with, with people, haven't you? Yes. Collaboration is yeah really good too, because it offers you a different perspective with your work and then also their whole community and audience of artists. Yeah, for sure. Excellent. Yes. It would be a different reach, wouldn't it? For different yes. people. Uh, the Women's Art Journal, uh, you you were in the Women's Art Journal, weren't you? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I have a few publications. I actually have an upcoming publication with them as well. Yeah, awesome publication. I highly encourage people to to look at it. Yeah, I've written about Judy Chicago, uh, The Dinner Party, and I've done a couple of book reviews. I have a book review um, coming up here in the summer, um, online edition. I'm really excited about. Excellent. And... Um, I want to just touch upon the women's lineage of art. Why is it important? You you touch upon it a little bit earlier that sometimes different cultures are left out of art. And then sometimes I think people focus on, no, I think people tend to choose sometimes like abstract that becomes uh, popular. And then I don't know, draw, pencil drawings become popular. Uh, I mean, especially in London, there seems to be a focus on particular artists and then it fades and then something else comes in. So as an artist, you know what you provide, you know what you do, you know. So how can how do you not get drawn into the fad or what's popular or what's what people are asking for, what's being publicized? Good question. I think it's. Yeah. I think it's a lot of like your intent as an artist. If you want to, if I wanted to be a product designer or if I wanted to sell a lot of prints, there's a lot of artists out there on Instagram who, you know, just draw to sell or, you know, make prints to sell. And that is not really my intent. My intent is more about the idea and um, movement and making people more aware or educated or excited about women artists and so that's because that's like the core and my value and foundation I don't I don't think I don't think that I could get wrapped up by a trend I mean mm -hmm. yeah yeah <laughs> but speaking of which what are your thoughts about a lot of artists especially on Instagram 
are complaining that people are not asking for the use of their art, but are reposting it, using it for their own, you know, making t-shirts out of it. Um, it seems to be a huge movement to stop that happening. People are taking advantage of people uh, who are just artists out there trying to make a living. Uh, what are your thoughts about, about that? Yeah, I mean, I would totally agree. I think it's totally unfair. And I wish that there was a way I don't, I don't know how, you know, if we're supposed to promote our work on Instagram and our websites that we can possibly stop that from happening. I think maybe just focus more on your own work um, than, than what happens if someone steals it. I mean, yeah, I'm not a good expert on that. I think it's really unfortunate and I wish we could solve it. I just don't really have a good idea of how that could be if we're if we're still wanting to promote if, unless you get completely off the internet, you know, and then well, how do you promote yourself? <laughs> well, exactly. And I I don't know if this is new as such because people have been, you know, singers, writers, uh, songwriters have been stealing things for centuries from other people. So I don't know yeah. if that's new, but I suppose the spirit of your art, um, I don't know if that can be duplicated. You know, people will know Sally Brown's art and that's it. I don't know if anybody could duplicate that or copy it. They could copy it, copy it, but yeah, they, yeah which, is, which is wrong. And so on this right. podcast, I would encourage people to go to Sally's website and get the art not from somebody else on the internet. I hope that's not the case for you, but many artists have that where people are posing to be them or selling things. So yes. make sure it's authentic. Con I would suggest that you contact the artist directly. True, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because you, if somebody emailed you or DM'd you and said, look, I saw something, I, I want to buy it, but I just want to make sure it's yours wouldn't you you would be appreciative of that wouldn't you yeah absolutely for sure i mean that's a really good point yeah just check with the artist make sure it's theirs before yeah. you before you purchase it mm -hmm. and are you and i know you support the national museum for women in the arts so can you tell us about that where is it exactly it's in Washington, D.C., and they just reopened earlier this year after a big renovation. And yeah, they are one of the biggest um, promoters or one of the biggest institutions dedicated solely to women artists. And it's it's amazing. I, I did go there this spring after the renovation, and it's really exciting. They reorganized instead of chronologically. It's now kind of more by theme. It's really fun to go visit. Um, I also love the Sackler Center for Feminist Art, which is in the Brooklyn Museum. Um, that's also another, that's houses the dinner party, Judy Chicago's the dinner party. Highly encourage people to go see that. Um, so yeah, it's really fun. It's exciting to go in someplace and just see all of the work by women. You know, usually I go into a museum and it's often many times, like many galleries before I even get to a woman artist. So it's it's really refreshing and exciting to have a whole institution dedicated That's incredible. to women artists. I'd just like to remind you all to click that like button wherever you're listening, wherever you're watching on YouTube. Leave us a comment. It really does help with the algorithm and to push the podcast forward. If you're listening on Apple, Spotify or any streaming platform, Please do the same, like the video, share it as well, and leave us a five-star review or any review, whatever you're thinking. Feedback is welcome. Thank you for your support. Yeah. And you mentioned Judy Chicago a couple of times. And so can you just tell us about her and why she's important to you? Yeah, so I went, I went back to school, for graduate school for art history, and I was really focused on studying women artists because I had recently-ish realized that women were often left out of history and museums and et cetera, et cetera. And so I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do my thesis on, but my advisors encouraged me to go see the dinner party when I was in New York. And I kind of brushed it aside because Judy Chicago is, or 
pretty recognized. She's very well known in the art world and especially the feminist art world. So it's like, well, you know, everyone knows about Judy Chicago. But when I went and saw the dinner party, which is a, a huge uh, triangular um, 48 by 48 by 48 uh, dinner table, and there's um, place settings, uh, 39 place settings, each dedicated to a different woman in Western history with, um, they have ceramic plates and embroidered um, um, underneath the underneath the plate. And so they're each like thematically designed. And then there's a floor in the middle with 999 names of additional women in Western history. And in addition to that, she has, she, she had educational panels talking about all these women um, that she dedicated this work for, as well as many other parts of the exhibition, but that's the main part. And when I saw it, I was just like floored. Like I did not know a lot of these women and it was just seeing history from Western history from the perspective of women was just like mind blowing because of course all of our history books are mostly about men. So it was just so inspiring and um, yeah, seeing that truly impacted me. And then seeing it again, it was re, uh, redisplayed in a different manner. And that's when I realized how important curating is, um, because it can really alter your perspective of seeing artwork, how it's, how labels write about it, how it's positioned in the library, what's next to it, everything like that. So that and that's what I did my thesis on was um, the curating of the dinner party and feminist curating and how that can impact viewers' perception. So um, yeah, deep dive on Judy Chicago. She's a feminist artist. She's still alive. She's super successful and amazing. It's so many different series of works. Highly encourage people to look her up. Wonderful. Thank you for yeah. that. <laughs> um, I can see a little gorgeous um, furry view. I can see the <laughs> yeah. little tips of the ears yep that's chalupa <laughs> uh does she not he he or she 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 doesn't want to be on camera well i'm trying to pet her so she doesn't whine <laughs> oh. Oh, she looks she looks lovely um i was just gonna say just lastly for people out there if somebody wanted to start if somebody thought and then i want to ask you if you have a couple of paintings that you can show or hold up but um, if somebody thought, yes, you know what, I may not be, I'm not Rembrandt, I'm not whatever, but I'm, I actually think people would enjoy this. How do you start? Yeah, it's really hard. That first mark is like really the commitment to keep going, right? But just, just start, like, that's the thing that I, you know, being a mom, oftentimes, especially when they were little, I would have, you know, five, 10, 15 minutes, and I would just be like, okay, just one line, if I can just do one line, and just, you know, baby steps, just think, don't think of like this huge entire, like you said, Rembrandt, just think of the first thing, you know, the second thing, and if it's, if you don't like it, or whatever, who cares, just that, to me, it's more about like having you know, fun and enjoying it and excited about what you're doing. So yeah, you can get anything, a pencil, you can use ink pen, um, really anything. So it's just a matter of the commitment of the first market. <laughs> Excellent. No, that's really encouraging because what you're really saying is just do it, just start. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that that's enough. So have you got one or two pages so that people can see and then we can see a little bit of the beautiful yellow and blue just behind you yeah that's a work in progress let me see if i can hold on <laughs> this one i love this one this can you hear me still Ooh, yes. this is tri tribute to a carolee schneeman so um, she's an artist who did a lot with the body. Um, she famously um, pulled a scroll out of her vagina <laughs> live in person. So this is all of, you can see there's pencil writing. It's um, a text that she wrote about the importance of women making art about the body. Wow. So it's a body print that I made that's rainbow. And then it's her text. I actually did this live. Um, so. Wow, that's amazing. I could see it. 
why you know what i feel like i'm in art therapy or something but i saw a hand i saw a hand in that painting the yellow the from the from your right i think it's your right or from your yeah that that bit that yellow part where your yeah. hand is um it looks like a hand it looks like a marigold glove to me it's oh, cool. the purple bit no sorry gold gold yeah yes and the <laughs> yellow and the yellow that bit next to the purple it looks yeah. like a thumb and a hand reaching oh, up oh i can see that that's cool it, because, I love it. yeah i was talking to an art therapist recently we were talking about how art is therapeutic and she she's an art therapist yes. so but the fun thing is to work out the the um just what you see and I'm sure exactly. you weren't thinking that when you painted that. That's beautiful, though. Yes, thank you. Here's a different one. Very tiny. Oh, that's like stained glass to me. Yeah, it's tribute to Alma Thomas. So she, she was a fa fabulous color, color painter. And then there's the self-portrait. And then the frame interrupts it. So it's really playing with gaze. And if you kind of peek around, you can, like, see it. But it's like so I yes so i'm doing a series of 24 of these tiny tributes with frames that interrupt to just play with the gaze so Excellent. yeah really yeah. plays with the gaze because i want to look under it and yeah. it. <laughs> but it also looks a bit 3d and that's in that frame for me you know it takes on yeah. dimensions you Love know? That. and it's giving me the feeling of stained glass it's you, you know do you see stained glass? Yeah, Name true. Code. Thank you. That's it. Yes, stunning. <laughs> Thank you. Wow, excellent stuff. And that's the beauty of art. Just it for 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 the person viewing the art, it gives you an energy and it's it, curiosity, and you know it's it's curious. Yes, what is that? Ooh, the colors, the this, the that. It take for me viewing art takes me out of myself, and all me I too. want to do is watch, look, think, feel, and that's that's incredible. And art does that. I agree. Yeah, thank you. I, I love that. That's a really good way to put it. As well. Yes, for sure. I mean, my my favorite art does anyway. I mean. That's what attracts me is what I when I see it and I'm curious and I want to know the story and I want to know the artists and you know what what they're talking about or what they're expressing or how it feels and yeah it takes you out of yourself and really into the present and and yeah that's a really good way to put it yes because you know I love reading and and uh, I love reading and everything but it's different. It, it art. It, you feel well. I do. I feel differently. I feel in a different way when I view art. Um, it's a viewing. I think it's for me. It's visual, and it all the senses are going. Um, yeah. But anyway, viewers, <laughs> listeners, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that as well. How What happens for you when you see art, when you view art? Are you actively going out to view art? I hope it's not all online. That's my, me judging. But, you know, the experience is different, um, I believe, when you go and make an effort and stand in, in front of something and view it. Very different feeling. Um, and the, as you said, the artists as well. Getting the, and this is why your shows coming up, your exhibitions coming up will be really helpful. If people could come and see you, meet you, look at the art, view the art and ask questions as well. I mean, what was happening for you when you made this piece? That will be interesting. Exactly. I love that. I love having conversations and getting getting people's input and seeing what they're curious about and yeah it's really fun I mean I love doing it with other artists myself so yeah it's exciting each show is it's exciting yeah I hope I mean and galleries and museums might seem intimidating to some people but really I mean it's it's not it's it's 
it might be quiet or it might not if you go to the Met or <laughs> somewhere major, but um, it's really for everybody, you know? So, it yeah. Is. Yes, it's for everyone. And you're right. I mean, big cities like London, you know, the Tate Modern, Tate, uh, the v &A, all of those national galleries, they will be busy. This is a tourist city. Right. Yeah. They will be busy. But uh, for me, art takes me out of myself. So I don't care who's standing around. I don't care either. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter how loud they are. Yeah. I'm, I'm watching, I'm listening, I'm taking it in. Love it. Agreed. Me too. Are, say, why are you going, still going to the Louvre? Well, <laughs> that question <laughs> answers itself. Yeah, I know. I was going to say, I can't believe people would ask that. But I suppose oh. if you live there, I don't know. I know you, you're <laughs> so different. People, oh, yeah. are you bothering with the loo? But you, it changed. You, know, you do realize. I have sometimes I say, do you realize it changes? They change things up. You yeah. don't realize. <laughs> and it's not just sitting there. Things are changing anyway. Yeah, so it's interesting. But Sally, this has been fascinating. Thank you so much. I'm going to put all the links to your exhibitions. It, guys, because it, we have a lot of American listeners. Sally, I digress. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming on again. It's been Thank you. It was fun. I appreciate it. Thanks so much for listening today. Make sure you subscribe and follow on all streaming platforms. Leave me a comment and also let me know if there's any particular topics you'd like me to discuss. See you next time.